that come in because it will Given all the information you have in your head right now, what do you think is the expectation that it will rain tomorrow? Okay, the guy over there, give me a number between 0 and 1 for A, the probability that it will rain tomorrow, B, the expectation that it will rain tomorrow. 40% for both of them. Both 40%. So he's saying they're the same. They are because it's a 0, 1 variable. So it's 0 times the probability plus 1 times the probability, and so you're just going to 1 cancels and you just get in that particular case for Bernoulli variable, they're the same. He summarized today's lecture. If you didn't get that, I will go over it in detail. OK. Um, first, let me uh, introduce um, the concept of uh, a random variable. So in particular, we're going to focus first on binary random variables. I will then relax this to continuous variables and multi-valued variables. Um, but it's very useful to learn first binary variables because every concept about binary variables extends naturally to other types of variables. And binary variables are sort of easy to think about. Okay, so, so a binary random variable is just a mapping from, uh, we defined it loosely before, from all from the sample space um, to a set of events that you care about. Um, we did an example before where, for example, for a die, we have the sample space, we defined it to be all the values that the die could take, uh, one, two, three, four, five, or six. But you might not be interested in talking about one, two, three, four, five, or six. You might just be interested to talk about even or odd. Um, in, in which case, your events are just even and odd. And so you have a variable x, and this variable will be even uh, when your event is uh, 2, 4, or 6, is in the set 2, 4, 6, and the variable will be odd when the variable is in, when your one of the events 1, 3, 5 occur. So there's this notion that a die can take many values, but you might just care about um, a sort of an, an aggregate of some values. So you might just consider, want to know about some sets, even and odd. And so you now define a random variable to be this mapping from omega to just even or odd. If omega is 2, x is 1. If omega is 3, x is 0, and so on. We use uh, plots to describe random variables. And one plot that we use um, is the probability distribution. And that one is easy. We've already um, used them in the course. And for our example, where we have even and odd, we have this distribution for x i, the variable xi, and I'm going to plot the probability of the variable. And that's just going to be two bars that indicate the height. Okay, what's the probability of even? What's the probability of odd? Um, so we talk about um, these two probabilities as the distribution. Um, they add up to 1. And, and here the main point of this slide is really to introduce notation. Sometimes we use a small p with the value that the random variable can take. And sometimes we just use a big p and we say that big x is the random variable and small x is the value that the random variable could take. Um, so, um, so this guy this height here is a probability of x equal odd. And this height here is the probability of x equal even. And it must be that the probability of x equal odd plus the probability that it is even adds up to 1. Or equivalently, I will use small p's 
and I will just write p odd plus p even equal one. Okay. So there's just two notations. Either I just talk about the distribution directly in terms of its value with a small p, or I use a big p and I use a random variable. Um, this is common um, on the right hand side, but I will use this one just because it's more, it's shorter, it's easier to write. Okay. But essentially the distribution gives us the, the odds of the coin being head and the coin being tails and it gives us a nice graph. Um, often uh, you've seen this concept that we can talk about the cumulative and I'm going to plot the cumulative actually like this. So the cumulative is just what happens if you move from the left and you add up uh, probabilities. So if this was 0 0.8 and this was 0 0.2 and this was the point at which the variable is 0, this is the point at which the variable is 1, um, the cumulative is just the sum as you move from the left. Oops, so it goes to 1. Okay, so this height here is 0 0.8. The cumulative will turn out to be very useful when we want to draw random variables, when we want to simulate from the distribution. Okay, so at this stage I'm just introducing the notation. And most of this lecture is kind of a bit dry, so I'm sorry for that. but. I, I just need to introduce the concepts to make sure everyone has the concepts. Okay, so that's the definition of the cumulative. Cumulatives play an important role, especially like in finance, where people talk about a lot about copulas and so on. And some of those copulas are things that went wrong during the trading and uh, helped with banks collapse in addition to greed. Um, so to understand the arguments about copulas, you kind of need to understand the arguments of this lecture. O okay, so expectation, um, as uh, someone pointed out at the beginning of the lecture, expectation is just a sum of all the values that a random variable could take, weighted by their probability. Okay. Um, let's do an example. I'm going to introduce a um, random variable that turns out to be very, very useful. Um, this random variable is called the indicator variable. Um, and it's defined as follows. It's a variable that is equal to 1. It's, it indicates whether um, W belongs to a set A. And it is equal precisely to 1 if W is an element of the set. And if W is not an element of the set A, then the, uh, the expect, uh, then the indicator variable is equal to zero. So the indicator, as the name says, just indicates whether W belongs to A or not. Okay. So as an example, the indicator of the set even of, let's say, W equal five is equal to zero, and the indicator of the set even of W equal 4 is equal to 1 for the die. So if you're an element of the set, you get a, as an output a 1. If you're not an element of the set, you get as an output a, a, a 0. And the purpose of this as we'll see later, is this, this variable will allow us to write everything in a much more condensed notation. So, here's a question. What's the expectation that W belongs to A?
Anyone? Why should it be 0.5? What if A is all the numbers, but all the digits between the integers between one and five, and one minus A is six? Oh, can you repeat your question? What is the expectation of the indicator? I want you to think abstractly. Don't give me numbers because there's no numbers here. Yes, both equivalent. Who agrees with PA? Who disagrees? Right. So, this is what we're going to do because we have time today. We have a formula up there for how to compute expectation. So, let's get a pencil and paper and let's try to plug in this variable x into that formula and let's uh, compute this expectation. And we're going to take two minutes to do that. Paper. So, and forget about die. The die is this example. Now, independent of whether it's a die, I can talk about this variable. I want the expectation of this random variable, I A of omega. And to help you, I will write the definition here. W can be in A or not A. And hint, the question that I asked at the beginning of the class was the same question that I'm asking now. I'm using abstract symbols, but this is really about whether it rains tomorrow. And then I'm going to plug here I A omega and then P O. <laughs> Let's put it like this. Actually, Can you what is xi in the formula that you have written in the bottom? Oh, xi is just the indicator. So why it becomes, why does it become p omega? So now I'm using the variable x to be, to be this. x is the indicator. So think of this as x. x is 1 if w is an a. x is 0 if W is not an A. So what's the price of A? It's I A omega into B omega. So what is XI? XI happens to be um, <coughs> XI will map to the value that this can take. That it should be the same inside Pardon? It should be the same thing. Yeah, I have a business notation here a little bit. I will expand it soon. 
Okay, now how many people believe that it's P of A? Okay, half of the class is getting to me. Uh, get, so actually, let's do an exercise. The half that knows that it's P of A, explain to the person next to you why it is P of A. Let me do it now. Hopefully by now you're starting to get an idea of what this indicator is. But the indicator I of A will be equal to 1 when omega is in A will be 1 weighted by the probability of Xi in A big Xi in A plus it will be 0 when W is not in A weighted by the probability of Xi not in A. Because okay. the indicator is 1 or 0. The indicator is 1 when W is in A and it's 0 when W is not in A. And so you basically multiply 1 times the probability that it's in A plus 0 times the probability that it's not in A. Okay. Because imagine if E is 0 and 1, then this is equal to 0 times the probability of Xi, um, sorry, This is 1 times the probability of xi equal 1 plus 0 times the probability of xi equals 0, which is just equal to the probability of xi equal 1. And so what we're doing here is precisely the same thing. This is just the probability that xi, um, whoops, sorry, I used xi's instead of omegas. Let me um, correct that. So inwards, the expectation that W is in A is 1 times the probability that it's in A plus 0 times the probability that it's not in A. That's because the indicator takes the precisely the value of 1 when W is in A and exactly the value of 0 when it's not in A. So then the rest is you just multiply 1 times the probability that W is in A plus 0 times the probability that it's not in A and that just gives you the probability that W is in A. And the probability that W is in A, the probability that you'll get an element of A, that is that you'll get 2, 4, or 6, is just the probability of even, it's just the probability of A. So the expectation 
of an event happening of in this case let's let's say that a a is rain the expectation of rain is the probability of rain it's, we use these words in English quite often uh, expectation, probability, we throw them uh, but we often don't take our time to think how they relate it expectations and probabilities are actually connected uh, precisely via this they're actually for the expectation of an event is the probability of the event and we could have defined all of probability in terms of expectations right from the beginning of the course and in fact there are books that do such three ties that they actually define probability straight from expectations um, as opposed to from the axioms that we introduced at the beginning did I answer your the notation is funny yeah you'll get used to it <laughs> Just think of. Uh, so I'm trying to map what is xi and what what is written in the bottom. The expansion looks a bit confusing. Xi is the indicator variable, and xi will take the values a or not a. In this case. Okay. Or in this case, actually one and zero. So x is precisely the variable indicator variable. And it takes values 1 or 0. If omega is in A, it takes the value of 1. If omega is not in A, it takes the value of 0. Okay. Notation sometimes is very confusing. Um, you, we introduce more abstract notation and concepts don't look as intuitive. But it will turn out that this notation will make our lives a lot easier later on. So it's, it's worth bothering to do this. Right, once we have that, uh, we can now move on to talk about, I'm going to introduce one more um, way of talking about probabilities. And this time I'm going to introduce a parameter for a coin. And the reason why I'm introducing this parameter is because not all coins have probability a half of being heads or tails. You can put a bit of lead on one side and you can get more heads than tails. So you can bias a coin. So we're going to assume that we have a coin that has a bias. We're going to define the bias with a variable, theta. And that theta typically will be unknown. The objective of learning is we're going to see a bunch of ones and zeros. And from that, we're going to figure out theta. If I start flipping a coin here in class, and nine out of ten times it's a one, it's heads, I doubt you will believe that that's a fair coin. You will probably uh, compute a bias that's nine percent or something, uh, ninety percent or so. Okay, and so we now talk about a distribution, p of x given theta, uh, where x is a variable that takes the value of zero or one, heads or tails, hot or cold. And it's going to take the, it's going to be precisely theta if x equal 1. In other words, the probability of x equal 1 is equal to theta. The probability of x equals 0, I'm going to rewrite it as 1 minus theta. Okay. Now, using the indicator variable, we can write this as the probability of x given theta is equal to, actually before we do the indicator variable, I'm going to do something even simpler. I'm going to write this as theta to the x times 1 minus theta to the 1 minus x. Okay? Because If x equal 1, this exponent here will go to 0, right? Because 1 <coughs> minus 1 is 0. And so you get 1 minus theta to the power 0, which is just 1. So we just get theta. 
And if x happens to be 0, on the other hand, the first term disappears because you have theta to the 0 times 1 minus theta to the 1, and that's just equal to 1 minus theta. So now we have a very nice, succinct way of writing a probability distribution that I prefer to this way because this way I have to always draw a bracket. Okay. And I don't like drawing these brackets. It's more right. So can x can only be 0 when x is 0? That's correct. For this class and the next class and the next few classes, our variable is something that can only be true or false. And then we will generalize this. But we need to learn how to do true false first. I will also write this as P of X given theta as theta indicator of the set one of x times 1 minus theta indicator of the set 0 of x. If x is 1, that's equal to theta. If x is 0, that's equal to 1 minus theta. Because if x equal 1, the indicator, 1 indicator will be 1, the indicator of 0 will be 0. And so we only get the first term and then symmetrically we only get the other term. The most common way of writing a Bernoulli distribution will be this form. Okay. This notation is more cumbersome than the middle notation, but later when we have more variables and it will actually turn out to be more useful. It will be easier to manipulate. Okay. So they're just different ways of writing the same thing. It's the probability that describes a coin. A coin that has probability theta of being heads and probability one minus theta of being tails. Okay. And we can also draw that with a, a diagram. So we're basically saying this is theta and then this is 1 minus theta. And the reason why I use theta and 1 minus theta is because when you add the 2, you get 1. So the probability sums to 1. And then this is of x, and then this is p of x given theta. The only thing is I've now introduced a parameter, theta. And I'm writing the distribution in terms of theta which for learning will be our unknown. So essentially learning will be about, we see a bunch of coin flips, we try to figure out what's the probability of it being tails. Okay? And if we can solve that simple problem, we will be able to solve gene networks and fashion networks and so on. So with a few more tricks, um, we will be able to do it all. Okay, so that's the notation that we will be using. Um, the expectation of a Bernoulli variable, so now just to practice, um, so we have that P of X given theta is equal to theta to the X times 1 minus theta to 1 minus X. So the expectation of a random variable is just equal to well, when the variable well, is the sum of our x being either 0 or 1 of x times p of x. And let's emphasize now that there is a parameter theta. And so that's equal to 1. So times the probability that x is theta that x is equal 1 given theta. So let's do that in a one more step. So that's, oops.
equal to 1 times the probability of x equal 1 given theta mm -hmm. plus 0 times the probability of x equals 0 given theta and that is just equal to 1 times the probability of x equal 1 given theta and that's just equal to theta. theta. Because when x is equal to 1, well, if you substitute x equal to 1 in that expression, you get theta. All right, so the mean of a random variable, of a binary random variable, is just the probability of it being 1, of the probability being 1. So the expectation of it being 1 it's just the probability of it being one. Expectation and probability is the same. Don't we say that the expectation of x given theta is equal to this rather than just expectation of x? <laughs> yes, you could be uh, you could be precise and you could introduce. There's other ways in which this is written. Um, so that's a good point. Some people often write this as the expectation of x given theta to emphasize that there's a parameter and often it's also written like this. Okay, so these are two common notations that you'll find in different books. Okay. The other thing that we talk about, so the expectation typically just tells us um, what's in this, you know, like for Gaussian variables, like when you have continuous variables, it tells you sort of the, the, the thing that happens the most, the mode of the distribution. Uh, for a Bernoulli variable, for a coin, the expectation of heads is just the probability of heads. We also need to know the, the spread, and the spread will be very useful for the next class. Because, um, um, and the spread of a variable, in other words, how much is, I'm, I'm, I estimate theta. So, like someone does three coin tosses, I estimate theta to be a half. Um, then they do 10 more causes, I, uh, uh, tosses, I estimate theta to be um, 0.9. They repeat the experiment, I estimate theta to be 0.1, and then 0.9, and then 0.1, and then point. So I'm like all over the place. So in that case, I'm saying that theta has very high variance. Um, uh, my estimate keeps changing. So you, you kind of not only care about being able to estimate the right thing, but you also kind of want to estimate it um, quickly. So variance basically gives us the uncertainty in the estimate. Um, it is defined as um, the expectation of x minus the mean of x. Let's use the notation that was suggested. Okay, so it's x minus the mean of x, which is just the expectation of x minus theta uh, squared. Theta is given, so I can just state that it's given. And so that again will be 1 minus theta squared times the probability of x equal theta. So the probability of x equal 1 given theta. And then when x is 0, I would have 0 minus theta squared times the probability that x is not equal to 1. In other words, it's 0 given theta. And that's 1 minus theta squared times theta plus theta squared. And the rest is really just tedious algebra. And this turns out to be this theta times 1 minus theta. Okay. This will be useful. Um, um, it will be very useful in the next class uh, when we actually try to when we actually try to plot this function. Actually, let me try here on the fly to plot this. 
So suppose that we wanted to plot this and this actually is what I'm going to call the variance. So what happens when theta is equal to zero? Zero. What happens when theta is equal to one? Okay. Now let's someone's already realized that this is just theta minus theta squared. So indeed it's just a parabola. Um, if we take the derivative is okay, and now we introduce a bit of calculus. The derivative of theta minus theta squared with respect to theta is just equal to one minus theta. Okay. The derivative is zero the derivative is just a, the slope of a, of a function and it's zero at the maximum. Oh, one minus two theta, correct. Zero to the half. Zero And if I solve for theta, I find a place where, the, where the derivative is equal to zero, which is a half. Okay. So I know that at the half, the derivative is zero. If I plug a half here, the variance of x given theta is equal to a half will be equal to to a half minus a half squared, which is a quarter. And that's two quarters minus a quarter, that's a quarter. Okay, so we have this parabola. Now, what does this mean intuitively? What it means is if my coin is unbiased, there is a lot of uncertainty as to what it's going to be. If I have an unbiased coin and I tell you the probability is a half of it being tails or heads, and I flip it, it could be heads or tails. Okay, so 0.5 probability. But if I tell you I have a very biased coin, I've put a lot of lead on the heads side. Okay, so the probability of tails now is 0.9. Then if I flip the coin, what you, would you expect? If I tell you that the probability of tails is 90%, what would you expect to happen? It will be tails. I'm telling you the coin is biased and 90% of the time it is tails, so you expect that it will be tails. And if that's um, the case, there is less uncertainty, right? So this is essentially what we're doing here is betting. You need to bet on something that could be half-half or you need to bet on something that's 90%, 10%. So the variance captures that. The variance is saying that if the coin, remember this parameter this is telling us the bias of the coin. If theta is a half, your variance is the largest, your uncertainty is the largest. When theta becomes zero or one, your variance is the least. Okay? If I tell you I've put enough lead on one side of the coin that it's impossible for it to be tails, then there's no uncertainty whatsoever. Then you know that it's going to be heads. And of course, the other thing, I plotted this whole thing, but I should clarify that theta, theta can only be between zero and one. So this is not allowed. Okay, because theta has to be a probability. Theta is the probability of x equal one. Okay, so the variance essentially quantifies uncertainty. 
Next class, we introduce a concept called entropy that essentially is equal, it turns, it's actually the same thing as the variance. And it, it also will be the basis for learning, um, for introducing learning. One last thing, if you have two coins, with the same, if you take the same coin and you toss it two times and the, the tosses are independent, how does this probability simplify? You multiply them. Independence. If you have two random variables and they're independent, x2 does not depend on x1, so you can drop the x1, and so you just multiply. When I take the product of x1 to n, given <coughs> theta, which is equal to the probability of x1 and x2 all the way to xn, given theta, this will be equal to the product, the pi just means the product from 1 to n of the probability of each xi given theta. Okay. We're going to use this notation a lot on Wednesday. Okay. So that's all the notation. On Wednesday we start doing more interesting stuff that is not as dry.